Hey, what's going on? This is Jay from JHP Video Tutorials. And in this video tutorial, what we're going to go over is HDR photography. We're just going to explain what it is, how it works, and show you some examples of it. So let's go through this. Check this out. Here's a few examples of HDR photography, you know, in, in practice. This was at the uh, B&O Train Museum in Baltimore. And the dynamic range is, is such in this environment that the camera cannot capture everything with one click. So HDR photography was used and multiple exposures were combined to create these images. Here's another example. Notice how the train looks good and outside the windows also looks good. That's a, how you know it's probably an HDR. Um, you can use HDR photography with water and it works really well with water as well. A couple examples of that. I really like this image. And it also works with black and whites. Uh, I love using HDR for black and white images. You get a lot of contrast and a lot of extra details in the shadow areas and, and stuff like that. And it also helps control the highlights really well, which is very important in black and white photography. And it works excellent for black and whites. I absolutely love it. So what is HDR photography anyway? Well, let's talk about it. HDR stands for high dynamic range. And dynamic range is basically the amount of detail your camera can capture between highlights and shadows. And that's measured in stops, or EVs, it's called. So on a super bright sunny day, the dynamic range would be high or low. It would be high because there's a lot of information. The, the brights are extremely bright and the shadows, you know, are extremely dark. So chances are your camera's not going to be able to capture all that information in one click. Inside a, di a dimly lit church, pretty much the same situation. The shadows are really dark and the glowing candles and chandeliers are really bright. So let's take a look. Here's inside a church. And as you can see, the dynamic range is extremely high. You can see how bright some of the areas are and how dark some of the shadows are. And you know that your digital camera is not going to be able to capture that in one click. There's just no way. And as a matter of fact, this particular shot is made up of nine exposures. So let's look at uh, what else we got here. Dynamic range explained. Basically, Digital cameras can only capture so much dynamic range, and it's, it's measured in EVs or stops. The more dynamic range the camera has, usually, in a general rule of thumb, the more money it is. And right now, the Pentax K5 is a pretty solid camera, and it has extremely high dynamic range. It, it actually can do 14.1 EVs or stops. My camera is the Canon 5D Mark II, and it has 11.9 stops of dynamic range, which is pretty good, but not that great. And there's a lot of cameras that have more than mine. But uh, the Pentax is one of the, one of the ones that's at the top of the list these days. And if you go to this website down here on the bottom, dxomark.com, it's a great resource. You can go there and put in whatever camera you have, and it'll tell you how much dynamic range your camera has and a bunch of other specs and information on it that you might not be able to find elsewhere. So that's what dynamic range is. And if you look at this picture, you can see uh, the detail underneath the bridge there in, on, the, uh, you know, on the supports inside the bridge. And you, could, you know that that would be really dark and the sky would be really bright. And, and if you were trying to take this with you know, just one click, one frame, the sky would be blown out and inside the bridge would be really dark. So HDR is definitely a great solution to getting, you know, an image like this properly exposed from all the way from the shadows to the highlights. And, you know, the, the best way to capture all that dynamic range is by using the auto exposure bracketing feature on your camera. And on my camera, it's a Canon and it's called AEB, auto exposure bracketing. Uh, Nikon has the same feature. And basically what that does is it allows you to take multiple exposures in a row, like it'll do negative two, zero, and plus two. I'll show you that in a second. Also, a tripod is key because you're taking multiple exposures, so you're not going to want your camera to move. And also a remote shutter release cable, or you can use the self-timer to actually take your shots. So this way you're not touching the camera when the shots are actually being fired. You don't want any camera shake whatsoever. So a tripod and a self-timer are the way to go, or a cable release. And this is what it looks like on the camera if you're looking at the screen on the camera when you set your auto exposure bracketing. So basically when the camera fires the shots, it's going to take a negative one and one third exposed shot, a zero exposure shot, which would just be a normal exposure, and a plus one and a third exposure shot. It's pretty cool. And to take advantage of those multiple exposures, once you get them, you have to combine them with some kind of HDR software. 
And the best software out there, in my opinion, is Photomatix Pro. However, the Nick software company just came out with an HDR software as well that looks pretty sweet. I'm going to try it out in the next couple of weeks. So how many exposures do you need? That's a good question. And it really depends on how much dynamic range is in the scene. This particular scene, I took six shots because I wanted to get the headlight information and I wanted to make sure I got all the shadow information in the rims and on the grill and things like that. So I took six exposures to get this shot. This particular shot, I also took six exposures because I wanted to get all that highlight detail. You can see how the sun was up there on the top right and it was extremely bright. Now, you might wonder, how do you set your camera up if you want to try to take an HDR image? And my recommendations for when you're first starting out would be use ISO 100. You have, your camera has more dynamic range the lower the ISO. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive your sensor is and the less dynamic range it's able to capture. So keep that in mind. You always want to use a low ISO, just if possible. A metering mode, you're going to want that on average metering. And I like to use an aperture priority mode on my camera because you don't want the aperture to change when you're doing HDR. You want to make sure your aperture stays at the same at the same setting. Your shutter speed will change, but not your aperture. You definitely do not want to change that. So auto exposure bracketing, I would start off at negative two, zero, and plus two. And if that's not enough, you could always take more. I always set my camera to rapid fire mode. So this way, when it when I set my self timer to two or two seconds or 10 seconds, as soon as the timer runs out, it'll take all three shots in a row. So I don't have to hit the camera three times to take the three images. It, you only have to do it once. It automatically will take all three in a row. That's what's so great about it. And, uh, you know, again, just make sure you have a, your camera planted solid on a tripod or at least sitting on something so it's not moving. And here's a couple examples. Check this out. That's zero. That's negative two. And that's plus two. So those are the three exposures I used. And the results are this. So when you combine those three exposures and process them with the Photomatic software or some other HDR processing software, it actually takes all the information from all three exposures and blends them together and you can work it and get a result like this. Really cool stuff. Here's another example. I just took this about two weeks ago and you could see how the sky was really bright, you know, a cloudy overcast day. So I did the same thing, negative two, zero, and plus two. I took three frames and here's the resulting image. There you go. And you can see I have all the details in the shadows and all the details in the uh, highlights. Works really good. HDR photography is awesome. Here's a few more examples. Yeah, so this image here is uh, really cool. It's actually made up of nine exposures and it was really dark under the bridge and the sky was really bright. So the reflection was very bright and everything and so nine exposures got me all that, all that dynamic range and when I combined them it created a, an amazingly cool image. It was a pretty cool composition, but the uh, HDR really brought it to the next level, in my opinion. Here's a shot of the Flatiron building. I actually took this shot handheld. I didn't have a tripod, and I was on top of one of those tour buses, and it came out pretty good. So I just did negative 2, 0, and plus 2, and I tried to hold it as steady as possible. And the HDR software, you know, it helps align the images when it processes, and it did a great job. It actually aligned it, and it came out pretty cool. And here's a few more samples. I got another ch inside a church, and we got this tugboat here. It's pretty cool. Inside this tunnel was uh, nine exposures. It was extremely dark in the tunnel, but uh, when you go all the way to plus six, you know you can pull out a lot of that a lot of that detail out of those shadows. So that's another example of HDR at its best. And I really like using HDR on bright sunny days too, because I'm like down this image on the bottom right because you know it helps with the highlights and the shadows and you get all that information because the highlights will always blow out on you when it comes to water so keep that in mind and that's pretty much it as far as HDR goes that's uh, HDR in a nutshell so uh, it works great HDR photography I highly recommend you give it a try and please remember go to JHP video tutorials and check out the HDR video tutorials a lot of tutorials that will show you how to process things this is just an introductory to explain you know what HDR photography is but I have a lot of tutorials on how to actually process the images, and uh, if you're interested, I highly recommend you check them out. So I hope you guys learned something, and have a great day. Take care.